Well, thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to follow uh, Earl Howe and to, as he did, pay tribute to the Self Care Forum and the um, PAGB, who, who collectively have uh, been real champions of self care over many years. And uh, let me say that uh, uh, although sometimes you look back and think progress is slow, nonetheless, I think the work you've done has really laid the foundations for the way we need to go forward uh, in, into the future. Um, it was a great video, and uh, you started with the 30 billion funding challenge per annum uh, by 2020, and it's a, it is a massive challenge, and we've seen in the last two weeks actually two reports which have uh, emphasised the scale of, of, of that challenge. I mean, first the National Audit Office reporting on financial deficits, um, for 2014-15, showing uh, uh, really quite a large number of NHS bodies in uh, financial distress. And then the uh, interesting report by NHS England, the five-year sort of um, forward plan, if you like, which uh, is a very short document, only about 35, 37 pages, very well written, and I think it, it puts it very well in terms of the, the funding challenge. The fact is that... Uh, to meet that £30 billion pounds per annum gap by 2020, they say we need action on demand management, uh, efficiency funding, um, and they say that's only likely uh, if the NHS actually starts to really take prevention seriously, invest uh, in new care models, um, sustain social care, uh, and they say over time see a bigger share of efficiency coming from wider uh, system improvement. And that is a big ask. Um, traditionally, I think the efficiency gain per year for the NHS has been about 0.8% per annum. I think we're roughly running 1.5% 1 to 1.8%. But to add the figures up, uh, NHS England reckon to, as you go towards 2020, you need a 3% uh, efficiency gain per year. Now, frankly, you ain't going to achieve that by doing more of the same. And that's why Clearly, we need system change, uh, and I believe that self-care has to be a part uh, of that. Um, there is no doubt that the, the service is under huge pressure uh, at, at the moment. The, um, the rise in um, very old people with comorbidities, the real pressure that social care has been put under, uh, and I'd also say that the changes brought about by the 2012 Act have been disruptive, and I think left a sense of lack of leadership, both nationally uh, and locally. And I think at the local level, one of the um, characteristics of that is actually the way in which the four contractor professions uh, are managed or not. Uh, I think we've lost some of the cohesion, which did enable some of the self-care um, schemes um, in the last decade to be developed, planned uh, and, and funded. Now, as far as the, the opposition is concerned, um, clearly um, we want to uh, change the architecture of the NHS to integrate health and social care without a huge and destabilising, uh, destruct uh, and, uh, and, and I think in many cases destructive restructuring. I think, uh, I mean, Freddie and I have been sort of shadowing each other for mm, more years than one cares to remember. And... Uh, I hate to think how many health service reorganisation bills we debated, uh, either from government or, or, or opposition. And I think we've collectively learnt a big lesson um, about the downside of organisational restructuring. Uh, but I do think we have to do something about the mismatch and the lack of integration between health, mental health and social care. And I would argue with you, or argue to you, that self-care clearly has to be a part of, of that integrated package. I was very glad you referred to the Derek Wanless review. It's interesting, actually, like uh, many seminal reports, that uh, uh, they're published, there's often a wave of enthusiasm, and then uh, attention rather drifts away. But a rereading of Wanless uh, does, I think, recommend itself to anybody concerned about where we're going uh, on health and, 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 and social care. And, and there is no doubt that um, what Wanless has to say 
uh, is very important in setting some of the context that we need to go forward. Now, if I go back to um, the last government, we were very interested I I in self-care. It actually featured in the NHS plan of 2000. Uh, and uh, as a minister at the Department <coughs> of Health um, some 12 or 13 years ago, uh, I was very um, much involved in encouraging uh, wide prescribing by nurses and other professionals. Uh, I remember, Freddie, the great debate about oral con contraceptives uh, being made more available. Um, when I think about 600 members of the House of Lords turned up for a very <laughs> lengthy debate uh, one night. Um, and I was also very uh, interested in, in, in promoting the idea of consulting rooms within community pharmacies. And it's in interesting to see just how many pharmacies now, now have them. I was also a minister at the DWP when we appointed Dame Carol Black as the first national director of health and wellbeing, which I think has many of the elements that you wish to see progressed uh, in, in the future. So we have made some progress, but I think we all acknowledge that more needs to be done. If you look at Wanless, uh, Ian, I will come to, I will answer, I see you hovering with concern. I will answer your question at some point. Um, was that meant as a compliment? Um, if you go back to Onlus and, and his fully engaged scenario, he talked about levels of public engagement in relation to their health are high, life expectancy increases and goes beyond current forecasts, health status improves dramatically, and people are confident in the health system and demand high quality care. The health service is responsive with high rates of technology uptake, particularly in relation to disease prevention, and use of resources is more efficient. And he maintained that public and professional engagement in individuals' health was crucial to sustaining the health system uh, into the future. And the review went on to say, self-care is one of the best examples of how partnership between the public and the health service could work. Uh, and it was estimated that self-care could decrease GP visits by 40%, decrease outpatient visits by 17%, and for every £100 spent on encouraging self-care, £150 worth of benefits could be delivered uh, in return. But, he warned, without a programme of engagement, GP visits would increase rather than decrease, even if people's underlying health status remain the same. I mean, how right he was... Uh, and I'm, I'm very grateful to the information that PAG has given me about this. But, for instance, Dr Anita Charlesworth, formerly head of the, uh, at the Nuffield Trust, said at a parliamentary roundtable discussion a couple of years ago that the self-care goal of the fully engaged scenario, which envisaged a switch of 2% of GP activity to pharmacists and a 17% reduction in outpatient attendances among 450,000 people using self-care looks very unfinished today and I suspect two years on um, it's even more unfinished and indeed we have a lot of um, representatives of primary care here today I think we all know that primary care is feeling a huge wage wave of demand which they are very much struggling uh, to keep up with and hence you then get the problem of access in primary care the delays there and the knock-on impact on the rest of the system, which sometimes shows itself uh, within A and E departments. We also know uh, that people with long-term care conditions could be better equipped to manage their own conditions, and here again, self-care can play such an important role. So, um, what needs to happen to really make um, self-care an integral part of, of where, how we need to go forward. Um, well, first of all, I, I think, again, the five-year NHS England plan is well worth a read in relation to that um, because they do say they want to do more to support people to manage their own health through uh, informed choices of treatment, managing conditions, uh, and another, an, a number of interesting initiatives such as group-based education for people with specific conditions. And they also pick up the point that Earl Howe finished with about the need to improve information to which people have access, uh, including digital 
uh, and technology platforms, uh, which they say are essential. And uh, I couldn't agree more with that and with what Earl Howe has to say. But I suppose uh, the big question is that the words are fine. I think it's very important that NHS England have actually acknowledged the um, importance of self-care in what is, after all, a fairly small document. Uh, it's how to make it happen. Uh, it's a crunch issue. Um, I think we need a plan. I think we need a national plan. Um, uh, I know that um, uh, national plans are not always uh, as uh, uh, fashionable as they once were, uh, but it does seem to me that to get the actual grip within the health and social care system and wider, we do need to set out some plan of action which would actually see that underpinned by policies that will be developed and implemented uh, at the local level. We also need to see uh, some cross-government working. It's clear that if you look at the audience here today, one of the great things about the self-care forum, it's something that is um, very much in parallel to the Royal Society of Public Health, which I'm president of, is that it has a much wider representation from so many different sectors than many health conferences one can go to. And when you see that, you, you begin to realise the strength of interdepartmental working between health, local government, uh, work and pensions, education, biz, name it, uh, you know, the whole of government has a role to play. And again, at local level, um, we have health and wellbeing boards. Um, I'm not sure yet they've kind of quite got the measure of the potential of what they can do. But when you think about self-care, um, clearly it could be um, one of the most important priorities that they could develop uh, in, in the future. I know that you think we need a public health campaign, a very high profile public health campaign, it's very difficult to argue with you about that. It seems to me it goes alongside some of the other really important public health um, campaigns. At the local level, um, we clearly still need to do more to encourage uh, community pharmacy to help uh, and help take the pressure of other bits of the health service. I would imagine that community pharmacy say we're willing to do it um, but there are still a lot of inhibitors in, in the system, and some of those inhibitors we really have to tackle. And that's why I suspect you need a local plan built round the Health and Wellbeing Board, but bringing all the contractor professions in, and not just the community pharmacists. I've been impressed with the way in which um, our um, uh, 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 dentists, for instance, uh, and other community professions have actually been able to pick up a wider health agenda. We need to bring them in into the fold, don't we? Um, clearly, general practice has to buy into this. Um, the pressure that they're under would suggest uh, that if you can develop a cohesive plan to which people can own up to at the local level, you can relieve some of the pressure on general practice. And that has to be really important in terms of helping general practice meet the kind of... Um, pressures that they're under. Uh, and of course, for people particularly with long-term conditions, we have to promote the role of engaged and informed individuals and, and carers. Uh, and then we come to the $64,000 question which Ian asked, is what's going to be in the Labour Party manifesto? Well, I want to, Ian, will you just let me ask people to hold up their card? Has anyone, did anyone read the, last, uh, the manifestos at the last election? Ah, go on, put up your green cards if anyone did. Yeah, well, I, I think that um, about, I'd say, what do you think, 10%? Uh, I mean, that is quite remarkable because that shows that we're not exactly a representative group uh, because clearly one of the issues about manifestos is that very, very few people read them. Indeed, I've got at home every Labour Party manifesto since uh, the beginning of the last century uh, and they started off with two pages <laughs> Uh, and by last one, I think we reached 95, and indeed the Conservatives produced a book. Um, uh, but the, uh, I'm not dodging the question, Ian. I, I'm just trying to sort of put in context um, manifestos and uh, how much people are engaged with them. Well, it's above my pay grade to tell you exactly what's going to be in the, uh, in the Labour Party manifesto. I wish I could, but what I can say is it's clearly 
absolutely right that we will want to have a very strong public health message within it. And of course, I don't think, and I certainly accept the verdict that you gave early on, that if we're serious about public health, then social care has to be a component part of it. So I haven't quite answered your question, but I'm always wary of yes, no questions in any case. But I hope I've sort of given you a, a, at least a, an indication of the kind of support that we would like to give you. Thank you.